Hello dear viewer, I'm Lee Suss, and it's, um, we've had a few changes in the middle of this video, because I couldn't do it all in one session. Um, it's now version 1.7. The storm is unrelated to version 1.7. It just had decided to, to chuck it down with rain and blow wind everywhere. This is occasionally what happens in the game. Isn't it wonderful, the weather? Okay, um, 1.7 has come in, and now the water wibbly wobbly ripples around. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that great? It's... I don't know if it's affecting my performance or not. I don't know, though. That could be a problem. And the other thing is... Oh my god! I'm squatting. It's good for my thighs. I, I, I need to exercise my thighs because I've not been able to squat at any point during this game. Um, and therefore I have... I have noodle legs. <laughs> so I need to do lots of... lots of crunches. Uh, so the grass has also been changed, apparently. It's a bit hard to tell how the grass is moving, but that's the big change water and I'm sure there's more things to come but there you go also in the meantime I have another turret up here because Xerax turned up with uh, two two rocket drones and two um, uh, minigun drones which were littering the, the landscape over here but are now gone and that's pretty nasty by the way rocket drones are what can really mess you up as far as uh, what's going on and I dealt with them but it was a bit of a close run thing they like to target your vehicles as well as anything else. So I've got the second uh, turret up here as well. This is a minigun. The other one's a cannon. Miniguns are good for dealing with... Uh, cannons do do good damage versus things, but the miniguns... They tend to knock the drones around and bounce them around a bit. And it, 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 help, it makes it harder for them to target. And it, it's in a more effective against that. So we've got two items up there as well. Anyway, otherwise... Um, Yes, my, my efforts continue. Still not completely happy, by any means, uh, but it's looking better. There's more to go on to here yet. Um, I did, from what you saw last time, I re I can crouch down, isn't it great? I can now, I reduced the lower edge to half blocks. I hope you can hear me over this storm. Um, and, and can I put my hat on? Because it's, it doesn't make any difference to, to you, but it's water's going right in my ears. Uh, I've reduced the bottom to half block, so it gives it a better clearance. It doesn't mean it floats off the ground, or it looks like it does, uh, as far as that goes, but there you go. Um, I've been slowly building up the edge. It's connections between slopes is what makes it gets a bit trickier in the game, making sure the connections work smoothly. So, for example, at the, bu at the back end, we've got a bit more of a smoother connection here, but I'm not entirely happy about my here. So, as it's hard to find the blocks, even with the variety that you have to make it all work properly. Uh, I moved the thruster backwards as well, because it was kind of in the way. And I added an additional thruster to the rear to boost the speed up a little bit. Um, and there's one other major thing I need to do, really, which is about the CPU. So, can we go inside for a second? It'll be quieter in there. It's a sealed building. When it's a fully sealed building, that's a, this, this is Brian, by the way, don't mind Brian. Uh, the, 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 a fully sealed building, uh, you're protected from the environment and the sound goes down as well. It's one way of knowing that you've got a, an oxygen secured building if, if we happen to need that because the uh, it wasn't there was no oxygen outside, if you see what I mean. Anyway, inside's a bit quieter. Um, CPU. So if I look at the basic example, the CPU here is a measure of the complexity of the base or vehicle. Now, every vehicle, HVs, SVs, CVs, and, and built bases all have a CPU value, and they, the uh, the HV has a uh, the base value for those is the the, the, the it's gone quiet. The the initial value, the starting value for all CPUs. Uh, depends on the vehicle. So HVs have got the lowest, then the SV, then the... So the bases can be on as standard without any modification, the most complex. And when I mean complex, I mean that the core that's in there is essentially trying to deal with all the things you've got in here and uh, all the different devices you've got in here and run them all properly. So for example, you can see the demands here, the constructor, it's a, it's, it's a large constructor, it's got a lot, it, it, that draws a lot, the turrets draw a lot, the cargo boxes have a demand on this as well, lights do, 
even the number of oh even the plant does even Brian does even even I think even the complexity of the blocks can as well like if you've got a lot of angled blocks it's how much the devices do and this is this is designed to be so that you you've got some control some restrictions over what you build you can't just build whatever you want to without some sort of feedback in theory if you had enough resources you could build a huge spaceship and we probably will later on but this means that you can't just go buck wild and you've got to have some control in there and if you go over your cpu limit what it means is that your your vehicle or your base becomes slower and less efficient so what exactly happens isn't i don't i didn't see a clear definition of this anywhere but it, it means things like for example your turrets might have less range they don't fire as fast your engines won't have much much power it's a negative effect because the system's struggling okay so the base is not a problem as far as that goes and also by the way this is an optional rule much like my it's quietened down just the rain isn't it the actual storm has moved on it's still raining but the storm front itself has moved on that's good anyway a bit quieter um the base is fine but for the for this vehicle uh we've gone over the cpu of of only five thousand starting level now this is an optional rule, so I don't have to have this turned on. I could, I could set it up in the in the world settings for the game, the level that we don't care about CPU, much like I've said we don't care about uh, the advanced storage methods. But in this case, I I don't want to be take it too easy on myself, so I have actually uh, implemented um, CPU in in this in this level. So that means I need to deal with that oh crap okay right, we're gonna put it in bury it in here what i've got here you it is a cpu extender which basically just increases how much cpu we've got in there like that there we go we now look at the vehicle Twelve thousand limit instead of five two six eight so um we've now we've now dealt with that as far as that goes so that will take away that that restriction from there. What have I done with this? Have I got the thruster back in here? I have. Let's shove the thruster back where it belongs. That's always going to be one of the wrong way. Let me try and put it in. There we go. That goes back in there. And this is just a regular block. Let's put our helmet light on. Um, is it this one? it a half block it's probably a half block what i would like to have in the game one of the things i'd like to have in some games in construction like the finny factory and the others you can middle click or don't sort of click on the blocks you're looking at and it will copy them and if you can do that in here i think you might be able to do it but it's not as straightforward in how to do that and it just makes things a little trickier to put in there uh, go okay I, I've got more to tweak on this this build, okay. As we go through, I've got more. I do more changes as I go. But at this stage here, what I like to do is give myself some more inspiration. So what we're going to do instead, before you can you can make a vehicle more complex by tweaking the the surface and give it more planes and angles and little bits. For example, this up here. This is a form of decoration. So hold on a second. If I show you this deco device, it doesn't do anything. It's just a variety of things you can stuff on your vehicle to make it look more interesting. I might put some strakes on there, some vents or something on there. Those are quite vents are quite cool. We might do that. But the other way of doing it, and the easy way of doing it, is to put textures and decorations on it. This is the texture and colour tool. It's very simple and very easy uh, to, to make and then to use. So we've got choices up here. First of all, we can choose what texture to put on here, for example. So we can just go, uh, this is the base texture. We can make it more you know, ratty, we can put a vent on there, we can do various things. That's a huge additional, I actually really like that. That bit there, I just like that, that's good. Okay, we'll do that around the other side as well. That's great, and then you can do uh, colors. So for example, I'm a firm believer, as all uh, orcs like to uh, like to feel that red ones go faster. So let's do a nice red color. There we go, Give it a nice smooth finish on the top. There we go, like that, see, it takes away all the <coughs> in this case, excuse me, <coughs> takes away all the all the interleaving parts from there, makes it nice and smooth and shiny. Maybe it's too shiny. Maybe we need a bit more texture on there. We can go for this. 
individual plates. That's kind of good. There you go. It's like a vehicle that I've made from scratch. All those. Also, what we can do is uh, other changes. For example, right now I'm painting on the face of this block rather than the whole thing. But if I do this, this has now changed as well. So the whole block is now coloured in. So you've got more options of variety of what you can do and things like that. So this is how we can colour in the vehicle and add a lot more, more, more detail to it. This is also why um, the, the, the decorative blocks are quite nice, but there's a limitation. That's all the colour I can do on that decorative block, you know? Whereas I can I can actually put a, a, an interesting texture on this on this block here by using other ones from here. And sometimes what actually happens with them can be quite surprising depending on what you're building upon. For example, if I go back into here, if I do a temporary build of this, so this is quite a good one, often used for making pipes, okay, or wires on a building or a vehicle, which I, I, I often do with this. I like run cabling down the side of the vehicle. Now, when you texture this, for something that looks like this, it can make a very different lot sort of pattern. You can go from sort of look a basic event to oh it looks like texture cave. What about this? <gasps> kind of interesting. Uh, what about this one? And in fact, I can do it again. Let's find a different one. Hold on. Some of them change on the orientation as you click them again. Sure, someone do this. No, you're not going to do it for me. That's annoying. Some of them you can do to, 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 to orientations. Look at this though. Look at this binding cables across here. It's gone from this circuit diagram to these twisty wires. And if you've got any sort of creative juices in you at all, which um, you, a lot of you probably do, I think you can probably imagine how you can do some, not with that maybe, uh, do some amazing things with some of these different structures in here. Very interesting things indeed. And this is how they make the carpets and stuff like that, by the way, and the flooring. Some of the vehicles. What about that? Oh, look at that! Oh, I've got a Geiger feel about that. That's a very Geiger thing. Well, I guess it's not as fleshy as Geiger, but you know, the alien ones, these are the sort of things you see in alien structures. You can do a whole lot of stuff in here. So, what I'd like to do is get rid of this for a start. That doesn't need to be in there. Uh, and this is this is wrong. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go round and do a basic. It's like when I used to paint models. I'm doing a first, a basic first paint job of colouring the whole thing in. Yeah. And then I'll do, I'll do, oops. <laughs> you can colour your basin as well. I'll do additional. Oh, crap. Okay, let's get inside. Something else that can occasionally happen. Up the top right, radiated fog. I would probably say irradiated fog. And knowing some of you lot, you'd probably say that as well. But there you go. Um, what we can do, my light armor's kind of battered. This is the radiation booster that I picked up to um, use for my um, use for my mining. Okay. Oh, let's leave that on there. What's what's in my other armor? Nothing, nothing at all. Okay, I don't want the EVA on that boost on there. Helps you, makes you more manoeuvrable, but it takes away some of your um, other benefits as well. But there you go. Yeah, occasionally a radiated fog can happen. Uh, usually it passes in a few days. Occasionally it can last quite a long time. Anyway, while we're out here, we've now got what we've got in here: three point four rads coming in. No, we've got three point four rads protection. I think three point five. We're fine. The, uh, the protection on our suit is nine rads. It's never going to get that hot. Some planets are actually hot like that, but we're fine. Anyway, so yeah, it's like painting a model. It's like painting a model. You do a first pass, and then you can add some extra textures on there. Where was that one? I like that one. No, I did. Oh damn it. Um, which one was it? This is the problem I find is is losing things like that. I'm sure you can change these as well. Sure, you can. How did I do that before? I had them. I had them rotating. I could make it go up the other way. Maybe not. You will find that sometimes I find that some textures seem to work better on certain sorts of builds and not others, like on SVs versus HVs. But there we go. Anyway, I shall bring you back in a minute, and we will have a look at 
um, some different textures I've put on here and then see what else to do next. By the way, I want to show you one more thing before we go. I'm just lifting my uh, vehicle up. The hover bike here would just about get off the floor, okay, with the basic lift jets. Look how high I can get with this. And it's not that hard actually to make a vehicle that will go, that will travel at tree height. You know, if you really want that sort of flexibility from your uh, from your vehicle, then you. Is that more lightning? Well, that's an exploded at the distance. Yeah, if you want to do that, then you can. Oh. Look at the bottom right. I don't know if it always said that. I don't think so. He's it just lightning. I heard this that weird boom. I thought the lightning had gone. Anyway, but yeah, so you can have a vehicle that hovers really quite high, and that gives you a bit of advantage of getting over terrain as well. Anyway, enough. Uh, I'll finish the bottom of this, and then we'll we'll change it. As well. Um. One problem you can see here, though, is that I'm trying to colour in certain blocks and I'm to reach them. So, in fact, where this hover engine is a, a solid block, I'm having trouble reaching the ones on the inside. So if I was in creative mode, it wouldn't matter. I'd just float into the vehicle and change it. But this is why I don't completely finish a build and then I I then come back to it, if you see what I mean. I... Uh, uh, I I do some colouring in and, I, and then I uh, do some more building and keep working like that because right now you occasionally find yourself having to take parts off so that you can colour the pieces that are will need to be done. Anyway, back in a min. Okay, that's some fairly light texturing I guess. I mean, I don't know. Um, I want to do more bits but I've not done anything. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I don't know. By the way, also, um, looking at the floor gives you different options than looking at, oops, a different vehicle. Yeah, you can't always do the same thing on every every sort of surface. I'm going to write mess of this, but that's fine. It's only concrete blocks. So, other things we need to do with this. I'm going to do some more stuff on here, but first of all, so we haven't done yet. Which is name the damn thing. And uh, being as inventive with names as I am with um, <laughs> with uh, with designs. Uh, we just go with like, something like beaver. Because it's it's chewing up trees, you know? That's that's uh, that'll that'll do for now. Now um, I've saved the template, so this now exists on my system. And where this is useful is with repairs. Now not repair see repair, repair, repair template saved. Not repairing like this, you know. If I want to repair like this, I just have to scan over it and find if there's any repairs that need to be done. Anything around here? No, any dings from the oh, <laughs> I must have done that by accident. <laughs> I've colored it in, um, spraying it around randomly. It's not going to make the building look any worse, is it really? So, yeah, you know, I can just try repairing like this. But if I've got a repair unit, like a repair block which you can certainly get. I'm very hungry, by the way. Let's go get some food. Is this off? This is off. Is this off? I don't have to leave things lying unless I have to. Right, okay. Fridge. There's loads of food in here. Uh, let's have... Um, what else grilled steak? A couple of grilled steaks. Why not? There we go. Um, actually, when I'm here as well... Just drop these off before they rot and probably make. Have I got anything in my inventory? Have I got any cereal bars? I do have one cereal bar. Okay, I can, I can just eat that now. It's probably going to go off before long anyway. There we go. Yeah, I can have construction blocks that I can make and that will automatically repair vehicles that have a template associated with them. And I don't like this around here. I need to change this. I need to change how this texture works along here. I don't know what to do yet, but I will. Let's think about this bit. It's too much of the same, maybe? I don't know. Um, maybe I just put a different shape in there, rather. 
I could do that actually. I could put a deeper ridge along these pieces here. Like I've got the piece leading out from here, I could do another one there maybe and change that. Uh, tree blocks. There we go. I can do. What is that? This is probably too much of a. Too much of a ridge. That's too much. A bit better, maybe. No. Um, this is what I do. Though I just I just fiddle around with designs where I can and keep working at them until I'm more or less happy with them. Let's get the colours on there as well. Uh, whole block, that colour, and that. Oh, I missed a corner look. How did that happen? There we go. Am I better by that? Tiny bit happier? Don't know. So, yeah, so if I've got a repair system, it will repair the blocks on here. To the, up to the point if you've got a really advanced system to replacing blocks that have been lost using the repair template. The problem is that is a very expensive system to run. I have no way of running that from this base here uh, as far as that goes, but it's something we can do in the future. It's just good to save it anyway. And also we can make temp we can make blueprints of this vehicle. So if I want to I can make this exact vehicle later on if I so desire to do that. Uh, we're not quite done though. We need a little bit more building on this vehicle. So, what I've basically built here is a tactical. I've taken my pickup truck and I've I've strapped a 50 cal to the back, and I can get around in reasonable safety. Uh, I've got some anti-personnel abilities, and I've got a bunch of storage and carriage abilities as well. That's where I'm at with this vehicle, okay? I guess it's a little bit better than a tactical, because I have got... I Inside here, I'm fairly safe from most typical personal weapons, such as, you know, the, the various guns that I'm using from here. Apart, uh, but uh, where I start to run into problems is if I meet someone with an RPG or someone with some actual anti-armor weapons. Then I'm this is going to come apart fairly quickly, this vehicle. It's a starting vehicle designed to get me around and deal with things like drones and other things like that. It's it, And protect me from the environment and reasonable safety. Okay, but we're not there yet. The problem is this is made from standard steel blocks. Now, if I wanted to, I could upgrade the blocks to, using the, the upgrade on here and some materials... Where is it? Upgrade. Uh, to hardened steel and then to combat steel. And there's also a mid level one called Xeno steel, which is slightly less tough than combat steel, but lighter. And that's the problem. And it's the. the... I need somebody somewhere. Probably lizard, lizard mules over there somewhere. I am. Um... The vehicle gets heavier and I have to put more lifts on it if I do harder materials and then I have to great and then and then I have to increase the CPU to deal with the complexity so I'm not at that point now I'm just a basic vehicle that I've actually designed rather than one I've found that can get me around but what we're missing here is is a bit more protection which is that when the we are going to go up at the Xerox at some point they're not going to keep reaching out to us. We're going to go and pay them a visit. And when we do, I want to deal some damage to them as well. We're not quite there yet. This vehicle needs a few more weapons on it. As impressive as these Gatlings look, they aren't really effective against buildings yet. But we'll have some things later. We just haven't got the resources for it. But we can go and, you know, maybe take a trip over to one of their bases and just poke our noses in and cause some trouble on foot. And this will get me there safely. Um... But the sort of weapons they use, they tend to do splash damage. So if I dodge a direct hit, a direct hit will probably hit me here and rip away most of the front of my vehicle. But it, often when I'm dodging, explosions will happen like here and over here, and they damage the side. So what I would like to try and do now, if I can, is put some basic, well, ablative armour on here. Any things that can get knocked off that I don't care about, that aren't going to damage my gatlings or my thrusters or the things that I need to get away. I want to be able to take a couple of hits essentially. So I've not done this before but I'm going to try and build some sort of protection on the side from here. Let's see I don't know how well it's going to work but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Okay? 
Now I'm not sure this is going to work. So I think you can get an idea of what I'm trying to do here with like a, a shield around this side to protect some of the collisions coming in. I thought about putting one at the front here as well, but I don't think there's actually anything that much vital in the front of the vehicle that I'd worry about. But more towards the back. <coughs> the problem is though, two things. First of all, uh, the way I'm building these. So these sort of items here are wall pieces. Now, I can't, for example, put one in here on the on the inside edge because this, of course, this here looks like a sloped block, but in fact it's not. It's a full block that comes all the way out to here. It's just a small ridge, so I can't really... I can't put this in here. I can only put it here. And maybe bring these out like that and bring them up like this, but then you get a problem of trying to fix the diagonal across the top. And it starts to look a bit odd. So this is the issue between what I've got in my mind and what I'd like to achieve and what is feasible based upon the actual blocks I've got and how they interact with each other. So if I do this here, it will blend us there, which is not what I want really. I'd, maybe I have to bring it out further. I don't want to make the thing too wide though, but I like the idea of sort of the, the pieces sticking out over here. I could for example have they coming out that much and that would defend that would protect the gatling from the uh, from any damage or is that too broad i don't know i'll play around with it a bit more and then see where we get to what do you think too much i don't know mm, and then maybe something like where's the texture i'm looking for By the way, this doesn't. You want to work some of the textures because, for example, this doesn't look particularly like this because you can't see the small lumps on it. I mean, that's a lot, but that seems too big to me. I might knock this corner off, possibly. So I've got visibility, supposed visibility out the side here. No, I can't actually do that because it's a diagonal. Have I got a diagonal I can use like that? No, this one. Uh, I'm using this could I use that I'm on brain think your way around it can I use that and make it fit in though I don't think I can no I don't know and this is now the big wall of the same thing again isn't it that's the issue on design that you've got the same thing in a one big sheet which I don't like having but then back end's quite nice, but I can't do that here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel I don't like it. I'm not happy with it. Maybe it just needs to be a different texture across here. Which this is blue. I'd like a deeper blue, possibly. I mean, we could have. Do you know what I mean? I'm struggling with this. I don't know. Is it even a good idea? Maybe it's too much to have this big stupid shield across the side. Is it not a good idea? It doesn't it? I mean, it does, it does actually physically do something in the world as well as, you know, being about protection. Third car? flag across the side I want them to know so I don't I don't care about making it a bright color you know I want them to know I'm coming <laughs> I want the I want the Xerox to go oh, oh crap here he comes again um, to raid more of our stuff I mean maybe I could have like 
even more of that's too much actually that's too that's too crappy steel on there if it didn't have the border badly welded together that's a bit better maybe Is that the wrong blue? Something like that. Don't know. I might leave it as it for now. As it is for now and then do, deal with it later. Also what I can do as well is... Do I want to get rid of the texture on the inside as well? Get rid of the colour on the inside. I don't know. Right, let's for now. I, I think I'll leave it to you to tell me what you think. You know, viewer? Let me know what you think. I shall, for now, I'll copy this on the other side. And then we're about done to take this thing out for a test drive, I think. Well, you know what? This whole idea is scrapped. You know why? Because there isn't always a handed version of the other of the block that you want to use. So as long as you get different handed versions, so uh, ramp connector left, ramp connector right. Yeah, they're identical but they're flipped over. They've got isomerism. But sometimes you don't get that. And for example in this one here, the idea is where it's supposed to be used doesn't doesn't really matter. It will it can go either way. But when it comes to doing this part here I guess I can just take these front edges off. But I'm not as happy. You know, taking those front edges off. Yeah, because I can't I can't make this angle. You see what I mean? This angle here doesn't block out this end, it only goes on the inside or the outside facing the wrong way. Oh the trials and tribulations of design. Even terrible design like mine. Right, I think we are finally done. And I'm quite tired of doing design. <laughs> I've had enough now. <laughs> I want to do something else. I want to run and shoot some things. And scavenge some stuff, which is the other thing I like to do from here. We're not going to do... We will do some more design like this in the future. But, for now, I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to show you another method of, of building things next time. Anything left in here? No. Um, but I think what we're going to do, we're going to go and, uh, I think we're going to go and raid some, I was going to do some mining, but I think I might go and raid something, is the plan. Yeah, I think, I think I'll do that, we'll go and, so what I was thinking of doing was, what's this one again? That's the alien ones over there. Okay, what I thought was something interesting we saw up here was, where was it, we discovered in our travels, Theta Labs. I've no idea what Theta Labs is. I've got to guess what it might be, but I don't think I've ever been to one of those before now. I think we're going to go and investigate what Theta Labs is all about. Because, oops, oh, I've opened the console by accident. How did I do that? Anyway, um, never even knew there was a console. I guess there is a console, but I've never played around with it. So I think we're going to go and do that. We're going to, we're going to tool ourselves up. We've got a load of... Uh, ammo and stuff like that. But actually, should I just cover that before we go any further? Because I don't... I've not covered about the turrets or what the weapons on here are. And let's get in here. So... Right, so what we have here is... Uh, let's go into the devices, actually, and do a quick sort from here. Let's group them all together into different sorts from here. And here you can see all the different bits and pieces we have, like the ammo boxes and various other things in here, turrets and the rest. What we've installed on the... We on the, the uh, the, the beaver so far is two gatlings okay so these are these are in direct control by me so in fact you can see them down there in number one slot if i was to fire them now i haven't got any i haven't got the power on i haven't got any, any bullets in there but that those would fire off and they're under my direct control and although they're fixed mounted they will basically aim towards my cursor ahead of me and they will pretty much shred any normal wildlife we might see out there as well as general troops we will annihilate them with that they are very much anti-personnel weapons. But we've got another one. you notice that the, that the turret is not on here. Number two is the harvester to chop down trees. Number three is the, the sensor. 
Over here as well, we also have the turret. And I can go into the turret if I want to. There we go. I uh, can't actually do anything with it yet because I've not turned the power on. Let me turn the power on. Okay. Devices. Come on. There we have it. There we go. So I can swing the turret around. It's got a, it's got a very good arc on it. We can go around. And it's essentially the same. It's a Gatling. The same as the... Uh, as the two forward mode, we can aim anywhere, you know, I can reload this and do whatever with it and aim. 183 metres is the current range on this as well. Oops, let me get out of here. There we go. I want to double check something as well. How am my CPU doing? I'm still nowhere near. Okay, okay. as far as that goes. So, and we'll just turn the power off. I don't want to, I haven't got much fuel in here. We need to get some... Put it back up again. So the turret, as well as me being able to control it, the problem with that is I can't drive as well as control the turret at the same time. So as good as that would be, it's not really going to help very much. I guess I could be heading in a forward direction at a moderate pace in a straight line and then fire the turret. It's not really very good. But it doesn't matter, though, because the turret is AI controlled most of the time. OK, so uh, it, it will shoot at anything that it's allowed to shoot at that I've designated in the uh, in the controls here. So for example, we could have multiple turrets on here, but in fact, on here we could have, could you have it shoot at prey species like the lizard mules, we could have it shoot at the predators, like those nasty little raptor things. But for now, it's gonna have it of player factions and NPC factions. So this is the Xerox and the rest and uh, things from there. And we can designate what it wants to shoot at. You know, the, the turret is not gonna do anything against bases or capital vessels. It won't do very much against small vessels either. As impressive as a Gatling is, it won't do very much against a lot of these vehicles. But it works really well against characters walking around like the Xerox troops or drones flying around as well. It will knock them. And it's much, it's it's a bit slower to pick up a target than a, than a human is, which is by design to make them stop being overpowered. But it's much more accurate than me. Uh, maybe not more accurate than you, certainly more accurate than me, but it's um, it's very good at shooting down drones. That's what we're going to primarily use it for. It's a point defence to knock down drones. By the way, this is the turret grouping. This is the turret themselves. I'm just going to turn off. You'd think by changing this here would affect the things under the subheading, but unfortunately not. Little glitches in the game, I guess. But there we go. And you can even choose, decide what to turn it to shoot at. So if you're in a, a space combat, this could be far more useful. I guess to designate this, but we don't care. Most of the things we're shooting at haven't got warp drives or turrets or anything else. It's just going to shoot the thing that's there. So there you go. That's the turret uh, dealt with. And both of these things need ammunition. And luckily they both use the same sort of thing, which is the 18 millimeter bullet. So if I go to this, I can do, let's put the power back on again. There we go. We have reloaded, I think they hold 300 in each one. And then we can go to the turret as well. The turret will reload itself, but let's just load it up for now because that's also a good idea. Yeah, 300 rounds. So we've got three full reloads and we've got 300 rounds in this as well. Excellent. So we're all sorted out. We need some more fuel in here. We've used fuel just hovering like that. And we need to, um, uh, oxygen we don't need from there, Pentax is for shields, we'll worry about that later. But essentially, mostly now, we're ready to rock and roll. And also we have in here, here's the cargo box, the cargo control in this case. We can get to that, we can see the ammo in there, we can go to our cargo box, which will hold plenty of stuff for now. Between me and my inventory and this, we will be able to hold plenty of stuff in here. We have a fridge. In here as well for any food but if i pick up a lot of raw meat from mowing down the wildlife or you know important plants or anything like that we can do that from there and we've got the con the ore controller which will pick up any of the wood that we chop down with the um with the cutter and also we should have the lights on here as well one second let's do this there we go Is it you slugging around over there? No, it's a mushroom. I thought I saw one of those creatures over there. Let's raise up a little bit, shall we? Here we go. Ten wood logs. And unfortunately, 
I've already corrected it, I think, in the video, but I did must make a mistake in the other video. Which was to say that we had, um, that using the right tool for the job will get us more material back. Doesn't actually make a difference, apparently. Uh, but there you go, there's a Tleropod over here. It's telling me it actually thinks I'm shooting at a log or something, or the floor. There we go. What do we use there? A few rounds, not very many rounds at all. There we go. We killed our poor old Tleropod. We'll splash around in the surf. What have we got? Meat and milk again. Because apparently that's what come from, comes from uh, Tleropods. And there you go. That's our hover vehicle. That's our beaver. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying that. Um, <laughs> also, I changed the front a little bit. I put these little V's on here like this as well. Looks a little bit Star Wars-y, I guess, from there. There we go. This is our vehicle. So it's not bad. It's, it's moderately maneuverable. It's not super amazing. But it's okay. It's got some good speed on it. Hold on a second. Can I just change this? How do I change my view again? I can't remember. Um, v? There we go. What I can't see if it... Oh, it's raining again. Miserable weather right now. Oh, look at this. Sir. You can see I'm making ripples in the water as I move across it. Isn't that good? Not a great view, but there you go. So there we go. We have a reasonable vehicle, which I hope isn't going to be too glitchy with the new textures and things put in here and the new way the plants and the water behave. I guess the grass is moving a little bit differently. It's got a bit of a wave to it. Yeah. Anyway, next time we're going to load up with... Uh, food and equipment and we're going to go and investigate the labs over there which I suspect I've only got some little turrets on like this and we're going to pretty sneak up on it and smash the place in we'll see what's in there a good old hunt around and loot uh, thanks for watching so it's a longer video than usual but the design ones I think generally will be longer because they just will I, I can't do much about that really they, they take more time and I don't want to you know not show you this stuff I'd rather show you what's going on the not but let me know some some what do you think about the design is it terrible is it okay uh, you know is, is it a re suggestions about what I can do with it maybe I'll be able to do something about it what you suggest maybe I won't I don't know but any suggestions are very welcome and uh, take care of yourself and I hope I shall see you again next time